well, former England batter. Mark Butcher joins us now. Hello, Mark. Good to see you. Right, be honest. When Pakistan got 500 and plenty, did you see England winning this test match? Um, well, they, they were potentially the only team that could. Uh, but, but that depended on a lot of things, um, i.e. us batting unbelievably well and very, very quickly, all of which subsequently happened. Um, but, you know, England have had totals of 500 posted against them three times in the, in the McCullum-Stokes era. Um, and all three times they've won the Test match. So <laughs> if there is one team um, in the history of the game that can do such things um, in the face of, of such big first innings totals, it's them. Uh, and then, obviously, I reckon by about the end of day three, when England were um, just a smidge behind with uh, with Root and Brooke going going great guns at the crease, that was when I thought to myself, well, I can see Pakistan falling in a heap here. But again, England still had a lot of work to do. They scored 330 runs or something in just under 50 overs on day four. Um, I mean, it's just astonishing, astonishing run scoring, astonishing batting. Um, and then, you know, had, had sort of withered Pakistan's sort of mental um, resilience to such a point that, that, that they knocked them over without too much trouble in the last innings. It's an astonishing win. Um, and as I said, maybe maybe the only team, um, you know, in the, in the history of the game that might have been able to pull it off. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk Joe Root, speaking of astonishing batting. Um, how does he keep doing it, Mark? Um, well, I mean, obviously, first and foremost, he's a, he's a fabulous player, um, technically gifted, um, plays, you know, in all conditions fabulously well, uh, plays spin as well as he plays pace. So all of those things are the sort of like the initial starting points. Um, there's been a lot of players who have been very technically gifted and, and very skillful over the over the years. But then the ones that, that go on to sort of greatness are the ones that have the the, the sort of the mental desire, that that drive within to kind of go out every day and and, and, and be the best they can, bat in scorching hot conditions for, for the best part of two days and just keep piling the runs on. So sort of mentally, he's incredibly resilient. Uh, and for such an affable man off the field, you wouldn't imagine if you met him um, that there'd be somebody with that sort of steely determination and drive to go along with the obvious skill. But he has it in spades and that's why he keeps going and that's why he keeps getting better and better. Um, he's just he's been a, a been a terrific servant, and he's in the the purplest of purple patches at the moment. The last what two and a half years, he's he's made as many Test match hundreds as somebody like David Gow made in their entire career. So it's just he just gets better and better and better, um, and more and more records will tumble. I have no doubt of that. Is he going to go past Sachin? Well, I, yeah. I mean, it, look, if all things if all things go well. If uh, if no injury comes along, if there's if there are no reasons that he's he's out of the team, um, then then you would say that perhaps in the next two and it, well three years maybe they'll play enough Test matches, and if he continues in this sort of form, he, he'll do it. Yeah, um, it's a lot of ifs. You know, everyone everyone said that Tiger would would be hunting down Jack Nicklaus's majors record. Um, you know, many many years ago, and we and we saw what happened there. Which is not to say that Joe Root has got a He's got a sort of hidden catastrophe life behind him that will bring him down. But you just never know. You know, that sport is a funny thing. An injury can happen. Something can go, can go awry and, and then suddenly the record goes begging. But all things being well, there's no reason why he wouldn't. Yeah, fingers crossed for Joe. Right. I'm going to be a party pooper here, Mark. Record oh, after record after record, right? But was what we saw <laughs> over these five days in Multan good for Test match cricket? Um, I, I would say over the, over the first two days, probably not. Um, but then anybody that's watched that's watched cricket in in Pakistan or from Pakistan for the, you know for decades now, th those are the types of surfaces that you get. Um, and and what you need on those is is bowlers um, that perhaps neither side had on show, which is you know the, the extreme pace of Wakar and Wazim. Um, guys who are able to, to bowl mystery spin and, and make make things happen on flat decks, and so, but what you got um, in the end was, uh, was was the will of England and to a certain degree Pakistan. Let's not forget they scored pretty damn quickly in their first innings as well to try to make a, a result possible despite the conditions making that um, uh, you know incredibly unlikely. 
Uh, and so, you know, the thing that has changed in the game has perhaps not been, you know, the, the, the surfaces are the surfaces in Pakistan. I can't remember a time when they've been, you know, minefields or have been particularly quick bowler friendly anyway. Um, but but the thing that's changed is the players have sort of gone, you know what, in order to make Test Match Cricket a, um, you know, a, an entertaining commodity, that we then have to do something in terms of trying to make the game watchable. Um, and in this case, it was it was two batting teams going hell for leather in their first innings and score. You know, Pakistan scored quickly enough that England had enough time to to then get that massive lead um, and make the make the result possible. Um, in in days gone by, both teams would have plodded along at two and a half, three runs and over, and the game would have been a, a certain draw. So. Um, the emphasis perhaps has changed a little bit onto the onto the players, and and they have sort of taken that up, particularly England, um, have taken that up uh, in in great measure in terms of trying to make the game watchable in any way they possibly can, even though the the conditions are not particularly conducive to it. Yeah, and they certainly did that. Mark Butcher, great to speak to you as always. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> 